What if I told you there's a way to get the same risk-free return of treasury bills, but in a way that's more tax efficient? In this video, we'll explore the BOX ETF and why you might want to consider it over your favorite T-bills ETF or money market fund for your cash management needs. So for short-term cash equivalent investments, which you'd use for an emergency fund or for a short-term goal, you've got a few pretty standard options like a high-yield savings account, certificates of deposit, treasury bills or T-bills for short, and money market funds. These are all about as low as it gets on the risk scale and pay something close to what's called the risk-free rate, which is defined as the three-month treasury bill rate. At the time of this video, that rate is around a very appreciable 5%, so these products have attracted more discussion and more investment recently. The problem with all these is that you're still taxed on that monthly interest or return because the IRS treats it as income, even if you're just reinvesting it and letting that money grow inside the account. For example, if I earn $1,000 in interest throughout the year and I have a 22% market marginal tax rate based on my income, I'm looking at a tax bill of $220 at the end of the year for that earned interest, even if I never withdrew and spent it. This scenario is actually what happened to me recently and likely to many of you as well with my favorite T-bills ETF, SGOV or SGOV, which I've got a separate video on here. And while obviously that interest is money you didn't have previously, so it's all gravy even after taxes, I don't know anyone who enjoys paying taxes, especially on money that's not really being used for anything tangible. But of course, that taxation is simply unavoidable, right? Well, maybe not anymore. Enter BOXX or BOX, an ETF from Alpha Architect that aims to deliver the risk and return profile of T-bills, but in a more tax efficient manner. Its full name is the Alpha Architect 1 to 3 month BOX ETF. So how does it work? While it may sound counterintuitive in attempting to resemble T-bills, BOX doesn't actually hold T-bills or any bonds at all. It uses highly liquid derivatives to synthetically extract a return resembling resembling the risk-free rate. It does this specifically by simultaneously holding a synthetic long position and a synthetic short position on the S&P 500, and the difference in strike price between those should be close to the risk-free rate of return. This trade is known as a box spread, hence the name of the ETF. If you're watching this, chances are you've never heard the term box spread. They've been around for a long time. Let's look at how they work. Specific to the S&P 500, a box spread would consist of the following four option contracts. A long call on the S&P a short call on SPX, a long put on SPX, and a short put on SPX. We'll use a hypothetical example from Alpha Architect themselves to illustrate how the trade works with these four contracts. Suppose we buy a call and sell a put on the SPX with the same one-year expiration and the same strike price of $4,000. Notice how the payoff profile in blue resembles that of a long stock position delivered one year from now. If the price goes above $4,000, you make money, and if the price goes below $4,000, you lose money. This is effectively a replication of a stock future created using options, called a synthetic long position. These are also European options, so no early exercise risk. Now let's look at another position using our other two contracts, buying a put and selling a call with the same strike price of $5,000 and an expiration one year from now. Here's what the payoff profile looks like for this position, effectively shorting the SPX, which we'd call a synthetic short. If the price goes below $5,000, we make money, and if the price goes above $5,000, thousand dollars we lose money. Combining these positions simultaneously effectively eliminates market risk and guarantees a payoff of the spread between the synthetic long and short positions, which is one thousand dollars in this case and which is like the par value of a T-bill. Appreciate that this is not a mispricing arbitrage, but rather simply a natural byproduct of the way these contracts are correctly priced. So we're guaranteed to get a thousand dollars one year from now. How much does that one thousand dollars cost us today? The the present value is likely an amount close to the future value of $1,000 discounted by the risk-free rate of one-month T-bills. Again, using 5% as our implied rate, our hypothetical present value would be $1,000 divided by 1.05, which equals about $952. It's worth noting that historically, box spread rates have always been higher than equivalent treasury bill rates, and we'd expect that to continue, likely due to the comparatively greater risk of the former. So now let's talk about those risks. Basically we're relying on the counterparty to pay on our options contracts. We call this counterparty risk. The counterparty for U.S. Treasury bills is obviously the U.S. government. The counterparty of box spreads is the Options Clearing Corporation, or OCC. While the former certainly sounds safer, S&P Global have actually given these two entities the same credit rating. It's also worth noting that the credit worthiness of the OCC has been tested throughout history, and the Fed would likely step in if anything went awry with the OCC. So for all intents and purposes, with some hand-waving, OCC 
PC-backed options have similar counterparty risk to US government debt. Now we get to the reason we're all here in the first place, taxes. So again, gains from treasury bills are taxed as ordinary income. That's about as bad as it gets. Taxation of box spreads is pretty complicated, but the gist is that options on indexes like the SPX are taxed as 60% long-term capital gains and 40% short-term capital gains. So we're already coming out ahead, and then the ETF wrapper provides some additional benefits due to the unique creation and redemption process of the structure. Capital gains are not as friendly for those who live in states with high taxes like California, so the comparison becomes murkier as T-bills are exempt from state taxes. Obligatory disclaimer to consult your tax professional on your specific circumstances. In short, Box is able to defer distributions and carry forward capital losses of some of the options contracts, and distributions that do happen can be classified as capital gains. The fund was actually able to avoid distributions completely for 2023. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, this all sounds nice in theory, but execution is another thing altogether. How is this thing actually performed in the real world? In its short lifespan thus far, Box has actually outperformed SGOV even after its slightly higher fee of 0.19% and before taxes. It's worth noting that a fee waiver of 0.20% is in place through 2024 for this fund, so it's possible it might increase to 0.39% after that, but my armchair estimation is that the box spread premium plus the tax savings should still outweigh that higher fee. Only time will tell. Worst case is probably that the box spread premium and the fee cancel out and we're left with just the tax savings as the main benefit. But of course, remember that's the main reason we started looking at this fund in the first place. Cap gains over income and the deferral thereof are huge benefits for most people. Savvy investors have wisened up to this idea as Box now impressively boasts over $1 billion in assets after only a little over a year. I think it's an incredibly clever, innovative product that provides retail investors access to institutional lending rates in an easy, low-cost, packaged solution that requires much less effort and intimidation than implementing a box spread on your own. In the interest of full disclosure, I plan to start gradually moving my own cash into box from T-bills, but I am in no way affiliated with Alpha Architect. You may still just prefer the simplicity of plain vanilla T-bills for cash management, and that's totally fine. If so, click this video here for some low-cost ETFs for those. What do you think of the box ETF? Do you own it? Are you planning on buying it? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.